This is the all-new River Morning Show with uh, Josh, Chad, and Hannah, and special guest from the evenings here at the River, our own Brant Hansen. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you. I'm so excited to be on with you guys. We are. We're super excited, too. Uh, we're talking about your brand new book, uh, which, which you are now an accomplished author, uh, have been writing for forever, but your, your books are fantastic. And this one is called The Men We Need. So I have a question right off the bat. <laughs> Why do we need another Christian men's book? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, that's what I was thinking too, but apparently this is a fresh take because I'm not the guy that would normally write that book. Like, I don't do any, I'm not an outdoorsy guy. I don't enjoy camping. Uh, I don't hunt. Not, I just, I have bad vision, so it's a bad idea for me to hunt. And then um, right. I play the accordion. <laughs> these, are, these are things that would normally get a guy disqualified from writing a book about it but honestly i think we need it because masculinity gets deconstructed all the time and that can be really good and that can be very helpful but people are now wondering like, what's the construction then what are we left with is there any distinctive like I've, I've seen books recently that deconstruct you know masculinity but it's like okay so if this is going to be from a faith perspective what is the distinctive thing about what men are for? Can you articulate it? And most people can't. So I'm actually taking a crack at that. And I think it's helpful because it's gonna, if I think if we live this way as keepers of the garden, like Adam was originally his assigned his job, Eve was not assigned that job. I mean, she may be able to fill in and do it, but he's made for it and charged with it. I'm like, if we do that, that brings life to all the people around us, including the vulnerable and the broken, like. We make that space that's a good thing well i'm sold get the book <laughs> <laughs> i try to make it funny and stuff but that's always in the eye of the beholder so you know i try to make it i kept the chapters short and whatnot because i know a lot of guys don't necessarily want to read a long book but um hopefully hopefully it'll entertain as well as give you some wisdom i hope so mm -hmm. Well, I know that, you know, as you've gone, are there a lot of pictures. <laughs> Dad needs those. Yeah. <laughs> I can do those for you. I can, I'll email them to you. Just personally. Yeah. <laughs> that's even better, Dad. Yeah. Coloring book. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I know that as you've gone through, um, you know, your life, obviously you have many years of being a husband, many years of being a father. You will enter soon, if you haven't already, but I think soon, the, the years of being grandpa. Yeah. So, mm. so there's, a, there's a lot there that you, have, that you have lived and done that maybe you can spare the rest of us from making the same mistakes or going down some of those same roads, right? I, I think so. And again, because I'm, I'm coming at this from a different angle, I'm always wondering what's really going on. Because the way guys think of masculinity, it might be, you know, being muscular or riding a motorcycle or what, like, I mean, there's all sorts of things, but it's like, what, what is it at the deepest level is going on? And I actually started thinking about this when I was 17. I was not, you know, an athlete or anything like that. I played the flute in band. <laughs> so, but I saw this poster at the University of Illinois where I went to school in every girl's room. There was a girl's house across the street and they all had, they gave us a tour when I was a freshman, every girl had the same poster. It was bizarre. It's the best-selling poster of all time, by the way. It's called L'Enfant. It's a French kind of artsy poster of a guy that the girls were just swooning over. But I'm like, but there's a million male models and Hollywood guys. Like, but he was holding a baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's the way they said it wasn't just the guy. He's, he's cute and everything. But it's like, it was the way the baby's looking at him, they said. And like, so this is wildly attractive to women to see a guy, like I see a baby looking up, making eye contact, looking up and basically saying, here I am, I'm vulnerable. You got to protect me. That's the look on the baby's face. And because the guy's implicitly, I guess, saying yes. And like, like that's really interesting because women intuit what we're for, I think. They deep down, they understand what we're for. So they, they also find it extremely attractive. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying guys, don't, you don't, shouldn't read this book just to go how can i be more attractive but but i'm gonna buy the book for whatever reason go for it but <laughs> bottom bottom line like women know when we're at our best and it's really interesting to watch like Zelensky right now and his popularity with with women he's not a model 
He's not a he's not a Hollywood. He, he was an actor and a comedian, but fairly average looking guy, I would guess. But because he's like, I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm defending our homes and our people. He's a heartthrob. I mean, that tells me something about about security and what women actually do are hoping that we are or will become. And so, yeah, over the course of my marriage, I hope I've, I've grown into that. Well, I have a said, older baby. Like, check, check. check. Yeah. <laughs> this is funny because I'm getting women's reaction to this, Hannah, and it's been fascinating because they're all like, how can I buy enough to airdrop these over yeah, just, a wide area from a helicopter? <laughs> send them out to everyone. Bring them on. Send them my way. <laughs> okay, so guys, see that reaction and go, yeah. yes, this is what I'm for. And you don't have to be jacked or, again, like a, like a, or scale rocks or hunt elk with your bare hands or whatever. That has nothing <laughs> to do with it. If you're an average guy and you show up and make your wife feel extremely secure, like she never has to worry about you flirting with somebody because that brings insecurity into it. She never has to worry about you not showing up. You'll be engaged and she always feels secure around you. You will be very attractive to her. That's guaranteed because that's really what masculinity, when we provide it, they recognize it and they like it. You've written more books than I've read. <laughs> um, <laughs> But most of the books I've read have been your books. And so I, I, I greatly appreciate uh, the, the fact that you've seen a lot of things from different angles. And I, I love the idea that you call yourself an avid, uh, avid indoorsman. Uh, I had mm -hmm. a friend who said, if the outdoors was so great, then why did they make indoors? I'm like, that's <laughs> it's cl climate controlled in here. So I, I appreciate you doing that. That's funny. And just so you know, Chad's voracious reading, I've now written four books. So <laughs> I've read two, two of them. They're both great. Yeah, thank you. Um, and <laughs> it's funny too, because Josh is like, you've been writing for so long, forever. Like my first book was like six years ago. So no, um, but I mean like that's a long time. It is. <laughs> it is. I read a tweet, and that's that's too much. Yeah. He's been writing since before the pandemic. This guy's been around forever. <laughs> That's how it feels. I wanted to I wanted to play some of this out because you, you mentioned, you know, women Im implicitly kind of at their core know what guys are about. So, Hannah, what are us three guys about? Like, let's test it right now. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Am I supposed to say what you stand for? Oh, and Chad's gone. Why did Chad leave? Oh, OK. All right. Good. He is only joke. dad jokes at his core. He is dad jokes and messing with people. <laughs> that is what he's explicitly all about. <laughs> That's its own book, Dad. That's joke. right. <laughs> That's right. What has the reaction been so far, Brant? Because I, I shouldn't have this right here. <laughs> um, reach. I know that the book's not available yet, but but some are kind of on, you know, there, there's a pre-launch, and, and so people are getting a look at it. What has the response been so far? This it, it sounds like hype, but I honestly mean it. I'm, it's amazing. Mm. I'm really uh, thankful and gratified, especially I'm especially attuned to women reading this thing and their reactions to it because they're so used to starting to read a man book and it's actually it becomes insulting. Mm. Um, and they're very thankful for this book because I'm, I'm outlining something again that's very masculine but it's life giving. It's like, I'm saying you are here to let other people flourish in your sphere of influence. Like the vulnerable people should not feel threatened around you. Your neighborhood should be safer because you're there. Even if they don't, real, even if they don't realize it. And when women are, are encountering this like, okay, yeah, this would make my husband, if I'm married, extremely valuable. And he'd be my biggest fan and trying to see how he can make, let me flourish in the world. Like that's, that's something a lot of women actually want to read. And they also know that there's younger guys in their family, for instance, that they want to hand this to when I talk about not being a shut in to technology and whatnot. Like, um, so that that's something that resonates with them a lot too, I've seen. Definitely has piqued my interest. Like send me a copy, but when, <laughs> <laughs> when is it available? It's March 29th. 
it comes out on all the usual book places, but I'll be happy to totally send you a copy. And, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but <laughs> for sure. Sure. Really cool. He's already sending me the coloring book, so um, <laughs> no, I'd love to get your pr perspective on it. It's it's been again, it's been fascinating to to see the reactions to this, and it's not like I discovered some secret code. It's it's this is Adam's job, and he blows it. Mm. He was there with Eve when she's talking with the serpent in the narrative. Like he was right there. Yeah, I'd always pictured him like a mile away doing so, like naming animals or something or whatever he was doing. He was right there. And he was passive and allowed that threat to enter into the garden. So when they both blow it, it's both of their faults. But God's reaction is to say, Adam, where are you? Mm. He, points, he, he asks, where's Adam in this? Because I made you the keeper of this place. You were supposed to protect it. You were supposed to protect this woman. You failed. Where are you? So like this is this is a theme through scripture and i think it's i think it's not a small deal that that this is the role that we're called to as a gardener hmm. that's powerful as you look at the release and people reading this in your wildest dreams like what would your hope be as, as you're writing this and you know people are going to consume this this message what's your desire for the result here okay i would love for guys to actually have a vision for their lives. And I think this is a vision because you, if you don't have a box top and you just have all the puzzle pieces, you're like, I don't quite get what I'm supposed to be doing. And I do feel like that's where a lot of guys are. And again, this is not about physically exerting your will in the world. Like I have to dominate stuff. No, this is, this is, this is much better than that. Um, but you need a vision so that you can make decisions. You can live with wisdom. If you don't have a vision for how to live, like what you're for, no wonder people are like walking around doing meaningless things. That's one of the things I address in the book is like a lot of people feel meaningless. And the reason you feel meaningless, you feel just sense of meaninglessness or ennui is because you're doing meaningless stuff. Hmm. You don't, you don't, it, it, it naturally yields a sense of meaninglessness. So I would love for guys to have a vision for how to live. And I think that'd be really life-giving for the people around them who may never read this book, but just the fact that he has this vision, it might, it's, it ripples outward. And uh, again, it's your sphere of influence. They'll, they'll all benefit from this. I think that's one of the things that makes a great leader is they know where they're going. Um, you know, they say that a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. But if you don't know where you're going, you're just, you're just walking. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of walking just to walk. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm willing. To, I say that a joke manner but i'm also i'm willing to put in the work when i know where i'm going what i'm doing and Absolutely. i think having some direction to to find out that purpose i think that's incredibly valuable well it's so life-giving like i mean as me as a guy who's not like all those masculine trappings things whatever it is like literally the last time i was on a motorcycle i hit a parked truck with it <laughs> I don't give you so many there's a reason i don't have a motorcycle anymore and that's all <laughs> <laughs> so um, but I, you know what? I traffic in words. I have words. Mm -hmm. And I get to use my words to protect the vulnerable, like working with Cure, like the hospital network and whatnot. Like that's very life giving to me. And you're, everybody else's role is different, but like you can use whatever you have yeah. to defend your garden, your, your sphere, like these vulnerable things. And the, the reason I think the keeper of the garden image is so great as a vision is because what does a gardener do like it he allows little blooms or little vulnerable species that would never survive in the wild in the in the survival of the fittest wilderness mm. these things would never survive but in a garden you're bringing into chaos you're bringing this care for people and protection for these little things that need to flower and bloom it can be so ornately beautiful but would never get a chance without your work mm. so I like that I can bring to bear whatever I have and, and, and any, any guy can, whatever you're doing, whatever your skills are, whether you're artsy or analytical or whatever you are, like you can do this. I love, you know, the, the idea of the garden theme too, because it tells us that God planted the garden and Adam was tending it. It wasn't something that we had to start, but this is all God's anyway. And mm -hmm. so we're just, we're just placed to in, in service leadership over this thing. 
Yes. And he wanted them to be fruitful and multiply and expand that garden all through the world. Like the kingdom would be on earth as it is in heaven. That's still our job. I mean, it makes total sense. But our gardens are our sphere of influence. It's where you're working. It's the people who are around you, the people who are who need you, the people who would need you if you set down the controller or the, you know, and went out in the world. So a lot of women that would really love to see guys grow up because they'd love to have great families and they're just waiting. And we've kind of checked out and that hurts. Those are good, important words. Um, you know, they, they, they sting at the heart in a good way. Well, good. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, uh, hopefully none of this is a guilt trip. It's all like, look at the opportunity we have. Mm -hmm. And, and look, at, look at how life-giving this can be for all of us. Well, and I, I appreciate, too, um, I appreciate Chad's honesty, too, because he, he doesn't like walking with no purpose. In fact, he's, he's asked us to install those airport walkways so he doesn't even have to. <laughs> have you seen the movie Wally? -E, the little people carriers in that movie? Yeah. That looks like a dream to me. Yeah, so a lot of people were alarmed by that, but you're like, oh, yeah. I was like, scared it out. I'm like, yeah, that direction. <laughs> this is it dystopia? This is utopia. <laughs> That's right. Cool. That's right. A um, couple of things off the book. What When you become a grandfather for, for real, what are they going to call you? Oh, I, I want to be called grandpa. Okay. Straight on. And I have all these, like, people who are a little older than me that are, like, they don't, they want to be called everything but grandpa yeah. i'm like that's fine but i want it all man i want the whole thing i want i am rooting on gray hair <laughs> <laughs> i don't color my hair and it's getting grayer but it's not getting fast enough like i want full-on <laughs> gandalf is what i'm looking for yeah all of it, the whole thing your, all right. your eyebrows need to be a little bushier to stick out working from my, my working my sir I may get, I may get uh, eyebrow extensions. <laughs> wow, yes. Bring so, that on. <laughs> whatever it takes. I, I want Is that an option? <laughs> I want it all. I want the whole grandpa experience. And it's supposed to start April 30th, I think, is the... Uh, Ooh. Uh, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Exciting. And I got, I'm going to bring the books uh, to the kids. I can't wait. I miss that. I like little kids. I like reading to them. I can do different accents on every page, you know. It's, it's <laughs> Story time with Brant. That's a podcast. Yep. That's right. right <laughs> then uh, maybe maybe last thing, um, unless uh, Chad or Hannah, you guys want to jump in, but I was trying to explain to them Club Awesome from back in the day, and I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Tell, how do I explain it to them? How? Okay, you mean the the radio part of it or the live? Yeah, show? like. Well, right. yeah, the five the five kinds of nachos. Yeah, well, we and just, all and everything. It was all just theater of the mind. I just found some dance music. I think it was a remix of a Plum song. It was like the, <laughs> and I started acting like we were in a club on the air. I was talking like, "Hey, we're in this awesome club. You know, we got all this cool stuff." And then it was, and then I brought in crowd noises and stuff. Well, it became its own dance show. <laughs> And some of my good friends who are consultants are like, this is an abomination. It needs to come off. <laughs> but but no, it, that makes it even better. <laughs> right. It made it even yeah. better. And it made it incredibly nerdy. Like, like we're all dancing around. We have a giant head of J.R.R. Tolkien here that's <laughs> lighting up to the beat. All this stuff. I was just creating this whole thing. And uh, it was so much fun. We actually made it a live experience. And we, we took it around, uh, around the country a little bit and did a big dance thing. I missed uh, that tour. Now I regret that my decision. So much fun. <laughs> One of my favorite things is when people say you can't do this because this is what this is what either radio looks like or this is what uh, manhood looks like. This is what this is what who you are is supposed to look like. And I love when people embrace who they are and they make the quirky mm -hmm. the most cool thing ever. And yeah, uh, yeah it's my favorite. Oh, we had we had banners made at my request and I salute the radio network for paying for it. Huge banners made for the gigs. One of them just said, check out this cool font. <laughs> That's all it said. I love that so much. And we hung that. It was like a huge banner. And we hung that like on the side of the wall with other stuff. Like That's they allowed that to happen. Well, no consultant is going to be like, here's what you need to do. 
you need to get yourself a, a banner that says, check out this cool font. <laughs> They'll never, because they don't think of it. Yeah. They're not the creators. Everybody wants to manage the creativity. Everybody yeah. loves managing creativity, but to actually do it is way harder and way more fun. And then, yeah, this will never That's work. It. We take it on the road and constantly fire departments shutting us down because there's thousands of people outside who can't get in. Hmm. Wow. To, to, it, for what artists? No, like people hadn't even heard of the artist. Didn't matter. It was a big quirky dance party. And that's like, I'm in. <laughs> it's, more indoor, it's more indoorsmanship is what more it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm into it. I like it. Let's start that club again. Let's do yeah. it. Yep. We had a make your own collector plates uh, station, um, <laughs> just paper plates with markers and stuff, but we would let people like draw stuff on there. And then that was your collector plate that they could get home with them. Commemorative. <laughs> <laughs> it's so healthy. It's so healthy to give permission to have fun. And oh, man, I, you're, you're an inspiration. I appreciate that, uh, giving people permission to just be them. One other thing, if I can mention about Club Austin, which you guys could do in a, in a million different ways, you probably are already kind of on this track. But we did the thing, and this was before Tim Tebow's Night to Shine, but I love it, where we set up a red carpet for the listeners and the artists were on both, were our greeting people as they came in. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when, as soon as they got there, they would, you know, I'm there, Sherry's there, the artists are all lined up and we're taking pictures of them and we're slapping high fives and there, and there's the dance music art going and they run into the venue. That's cool. Uh, it's like inverting that whole thing where it's like enough with the, enough with the superstars. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that here. That's not how the kingdom works. And uh, that just makes an attitude. This atmosphere is joyous right from the very start because you flip everything upside down. That's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. He is Brant Hansen. Um, he's an author, speaker, Cure International um, enthusiast, world traveler, and uh, the book is called "The Men We Need." And boy, do we! Brant, thank you for your time, sir. We appreciate your uh, your friendship and the conversation. Thank you. Love you guys and your show. <laughs>